my name is Dr. Olivier Trinan. I'm a medical oncologist at the Saint Léon Béra in Lyon, France. I'm very pleased to share with you this short video on a recent clinical trial, Profiler 2. We now know that next generation sequencing or NGS test can be used to identify targetable genomic alterations in a patient's cancer and inform treatment decisions. This is becoming increasingly relevant as highlighted by the recent REALM study of patients with solid tumors. However, questions still exist regarding the clinical utility of comprehensive genomic profiling, particularly the added value of larger NGS gene panels, including molecular signatures such as tumor mutational burden, microsatellite instability, or loss of heterozygosy, compared with smaller NGS gene panels. Profiler 2 was a multicentric prospective cohort study that aimed to compare the proportion of patients with at least one targeted agent recommendation regarding to whether a large comprehensive genomic profiling panel from Foundation Medicine or a smaller control NGS panel was used. The CGP panel from FMI covered over 300 genes and included molecular signatures such as TMB and microcytolot instability. The control panel covered approximately 80 genes. Profiler 2 enrolled adult patients with metastatic or advanced solid tumors who were receiving first or second line of chemotherapy. The median age of the patient was 57 years old and 55 were female, and the median time from randomization to the first molecular tumor ball discussion was 7.6 months. The main tumor types within the patient population were glioma, gynae, sarcoma, and breast cancers. For the study design, both the TGP panel and the control panel were performed for each patient. Randomization to two study arms determined which gene panel results were first reviewed by the molecular tumor board at disease progression. 171 patients were randomized to the CGP panel arm and 168 patients to the control panel arm. The results from the second panel remain blinding to the molecular tumor board. The results were only unblinded if the targeting agent was not recommended to a patient or if disease progression occurred following initiation of a targeted agent. Overall, 32% of randomized patients had at least one targeted agent recommendation according to both panels. Use of the CGP panel resulted in more targeted agent recommendations than the control panel. 20% of patients had at least one targeted agent recommendation according to the CGP panel only. 5% of patients had at least one targeted agent recommendation according to the control panel only. In total, this led to the identification of at least one recommended targeted therapy in 52% of the patients from whom the CGP panel was used compared with 37% in the patient who whom the control panel was used. The main targeted agents initiated were PARP inhibitors or mTOR inhibitors and immunotherapy. The initiation of immunotherapy and PARP inhibitors in particular highlights the benefits from using panels that assess molecular signatures such as the mutational burdens or microcytoid instability. Overall, 15% of patients started a recommended targeted agent. 8% had a targeted agent recommendation from both panels, 6% from only the CGP panel, and less than 1% from only the control panel. This difference observed is due both to the fact that the TGP panel assessed molecular signatures and covered a large number of genes compared with the control panel. In conclusion, the Profiler O2 study 
met its primary endpoint by demonstrating that the use of a larger comprehensive genomic profiling panel from FMI increased the number of recommended targeted agent options compared with the use of a smaller controlled gene panel. And I want to thank you for your attention.